In this video, I'm going to show you how to export your videos for YouTube from Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So once we're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro, you've got your footage, your video on your timeline and you're ready to export it. We now want to go to File, Export Media. And that will bring up the Export Settings tab. And in the Export Settings tab, you can see we can flick through the video to see the previews. And if you only want to export a specific part of the video, you can just use the in point here to set the start of the video and scroll through to the point where you want it to finish and select the out point or the end point. But of course, if you want the full video, then you can just drag those cursors to the left and to the right. Now, from here, we're going to go over to the export settings. And if we go into format, we can see we've got all of these different formats. Now, each one of these different formats is going to give you a different output setting. So we've got animated GIF, we've got Apple ProRes, DNX HR, H.264, JPEG, and that is a still image export. You've got MP3, that's an audio export. Then we go down and we've got QuickTime, Target, TIFF, Waveform. There's so many settings here. But the one option that we want to select, the one setting we're going to use is H.264. Now, the reason why we choose H.264 for our export as opposed to all of those other settings is because H.264 doesn't really compress your footage a lot. It still looks high quality. It doesn't look like it's been damaged by the export process, but it has a smaller file size compared to other formats. If I was to export this eight minute video into Apple ProRes or in QuickTime, for example, the video file will end up being around 10 gigabytes and that is insane. So if we export to H.264, the video will only be between 50 megabytes to around 600 megabytes. And this depends on the settings that we're going to select now. So now that we've selected H.264, we can go down to preset and we can select high bit rate. Now, if we go down to output name, we can select sequence 01 and we can rename the file if we want to, and we can place this in a specific file or folder on your computer. Now make sure export video and export audio are selected. If you deselect one of these, it basically means that whatever you just deselected will not appear in the video. So make sure both export video and export audio are selected. Now we'll move down to the video tab and you want to select match source and that's going to match the export settings to the composition settings. So if your video is in 1920 by 1080, selecting match source will make sure that you export to 1920 by 1080. But of course, you can always go and double check. So you can see width 1920, height 1080. And if for some reason that doesn't look right, you can deselect this box and you can just go ahead and change the numbers. Now, moving down, we've got frame rates. You want to make sure your frame rate is your desired frame rate. In my example, I'm using 23.976, but feel free to use whatever frame rate your project is. Field order should be progressive. Aspect should be square pixels. So none of these select square pixels. Then you want to select render at maximum depth. We'll scroll down, go past this, and then you can see we've got bitrate settings. Now you want to change the bitrate encoding to CBR. And now just below that, you can see we've got target bit rates. If we pull this slider all the way to the left, we'll have 0.19. And basically what this means is there's going to be a lot of compression on the video file. So the video file will probably only be about three megabytes in size, but the video quality will be awful, unfortunately. But if we pull that all the way to the right, then we're going to get the sharpest possible look on our footage, but the file size will be much larger. Still though, even if we pull this all the way up to the end, you can see the estimated file size is 3,224 megabytes. And as you can see, if I pull that all the way to the left, then that's 32 meg. That's just the estimated file size. It might differ to that. But generally when I'm uploading to YouTube, I put that somewhere around in the middle, so about 25, and that's given me 1.6 gigabyte export, which is big, but it's not huge. Of course, though, if that's still too much for you, then you can just pull the slider down to the left. And if you pull that down to around 10, then this eight minute 30 video drops down to 600 megabytes. So that's completely up to you. Then moving on, we've got use maximum render quality. Make sure this is selected. And then your time interpolation can be frame sampling. Then all you have to do is press the export button and then you're just gonna wait for your computer to export the video you're gonna grab that file and put it on YouTube. So there you go. When it comes to exporting your videos for YouTube, using H.264 is going to help to keep your file sizes smaller, but keep your video quality nice and high. 
So when it comes to exporting for YouTube, use H.264 and you're going to have a great looking video. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your support and I will see you on the next video. See you there.